welcome back guys to my garage. Uh, in this video, I'll be showing you our newest addition to the cars here. Uh, it's a 2004 Mercedes SL 500. This build is actually for my dad. He's been wanting an R230 for some time now. He used to have one back in 03, but then I came along and a Roadster wasn't a great family car. This SL is in decent cosmetic shape, although the car was backed into on the passenger side quarter panel, leaving a nice dent behind and some damaged paint. Outside of that and a few minor paint chips, I have to say it's not bad for a 20 year old car. This SL was cheap and it was cheap for a reason. It has over 155,000 miles and needs quite a bit of work to get roadworthy again. It has a red APC suspension light on, it needs new brakes all around, the driver's side window regulator is bad, the tires are bald and dry rotted, and worst of all, it has some bad electrical issues which are not fun to deal with on old German cars. So with that said, let's restore this SL back to its former glory. So I just took off the yellow oxidized layer off of the headlight with a scotch right pad and some soapy water. They're all masked off. So let's make these look brand new. It's the next day. Uh, the last clip you guys saw was at about 2.40 in the morning. And I just threw a coat of clear on there real quick, uh, just a few seconds ago. So that one looks pretty good after I sanded it down and put a clear coat over that. This one, however, um, has a little bit of fading on the inside of the headlight right here um, where the projector shines through. Uh, but other than that, the rest of the headlight looks good. So we went from this to this. So we drove this car about three hours home uh, from New York to up here in Connecticut. And what we noticed was the headlights were really bad. Now you can see this one's aimed just fine, it's perfect. Um, but the car was involved in a collision on that side and the headlight was replaced. But it wasn't aligned properly, so you can see it's pretty much aiming at the ground. If I back up a few more feet, that'll be at ground level. Uh, so it was like driving with one headlight and this bulb is either really old or just not that good. It, it looks bright here, but it's not that bright. So I'm going to align this and uh, hopefully that'll fix the headlight issue. I would say right about there looks good. Uh, I'm going to put two new bulbs in here just so the colors match. I don't know if you can tell this one's a little bit warmer than that one. Now I just got done removing the uh, window regulator. And somebody had attempted to open and look in here before and they completely mangled um this uh this foam that sits on top of the door card i assume for insulation or noise noise dampening so i'm going to try to look for a replacement one of those you can see they just they completely ripped it off this just came off in chunks but the window regulator is out luckily on this car it's just bolted in there's no rivets or anything like on my e-class so that came out in a few minutes. The door card was easy to take off. You can see on the window regulator here exactly where it failed. So $250 from FCP Euro. I got a new one and we're gonna pop it in here and fix the window. The uh, new window regulator is installed and the window finally stays up. Uh, this was a pain to adjust. So you have to adjust it every which way and then when it opens and closes, it, it's uh, pretty confusing. Uh, it took me a long time to figure it out. And then I made the mistake of trying to figure out how waterproof the car was. So the water comes out there and there. It's the exact on each side, but it's just a little a couple drops of water. Now I have a battery light. I don't know if you can see that just because of the messed up display. Um, there's a thing for the roll bar, an error for that. And the uh, airbag light is on, the SRS light. So I hope I make it home. All right, so back from the car wash, I got a nice uh, big bug splatter. Anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, I ripped apart the car to try to figure out this issue. I do believe it's a canvas issue. Um, ripped like half this car apart 
chicken back there. That was fine. And then I get to the front and there is a can uh, C terminal. And when I was taking the carpet apart, I noticed it's a little damp in here. It's not like soaking wet, but it's damp. And I don't know if you can see that can terminal. Look at that. I think we found our smoking gun. Once I picked this up and started uh, messing with it, uh, you can hear the actually the the chime. Stuff is starting to work again. The doors finally went down because it sees that the doors are open. So I think this is going to be the issue. So I'm going to see if I can clean this up. And if I can't, then I'll just try to find a replacement uh, terminal. All right, so I'm just going to try to spray it down. And then I think I'm going to need uh, probably a, a wire brush for this. All right, the piece is pumped back in and uh, I just started the car. Not sure if you can see that. Um, Nothing on the screen, just normal, and all the lights are gone. So I think it was definitely that can block down there. Um, one of the uh, canvas connections actually had a broken connector, so I'm gonna have to fix that. But for now, um, I think I know what the issue is, so I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, we'll get working on the next thing. <sighs> all right, guys, I'm starting to think we bought a real lemon here. Uh, I was having an issue uh, when the car was on with the headlights off. That headlight was on, which is normal. This one was not. From there, I noticed the fog light wasn't working, the daytime running light's not working, the turn signal's not working. This whole side is basically dead except for the low beam. Uh, now, if I go in the car and don't put the key in and I turn the um, headlight knob all the way on and turn the headlights on, only this headlight turns on and that one doesn't. It's really weird. I don't get it. So I was scanning the car and I noticed the passenger side SAM module was not showing up. In fact, the driver's side SAM module was showing an error uh, because of a CAN communication error with the passenger side SAM. So I went digging and I pulled the passenger side SAM module out and I just took it apart here and instantly there you can see water intrusion, there's corrosion all over those fuses. And if you look in here, I don't know if you can see around here a little bit, there's corrosion on these little components and all over these pins here. I'm going to pull this off and see what's behind there. Uh, it doesn't look too bad up here. I'm just I'm worried about the other side. All right. Now the other side looks good. There's a bit of corrosion there. So I'm gonna try to clean this up as best I can and clean up all the contacts in there and put it back in the car. And cross my fingers. I don't even know why I'm doing that. I already spent 10 minutes cleaning this, uh, just trying to get every little bit of corrosion out of there. Luckily, none of the components look damaged, uh, just had that corrosion build up on it. So I have a good feeling about this. Hopefully, this is all good. Um, I've just been using this uh, uh, electrical contact cleaner and rubbing so luckily there's nothing really on the back but traces so i shouldn't have an issue back there everything up here looks really good now well cleaning it did not fix it so i'm going to pull it out and put a replacement unit in there and see if that works the new sam is in looks like it came from a 2011 sl 550 um so i'm just gonna take all this out transfer everything over from our uh, old one and uh, pop it in the car and hopefully hopefully that fixed the issue all right, the new SAM module is not fully installed, but I have everything plugged in. So electrically, it's fine. I just didn't push it down and put the cover over it. I just connected the battery. The car made a bunch of funny noises. And I'm going to see if I hit the unlock button before only that one lit up. So let's see if they both do it. Look at that. Oh, and the fog light works. Same on this side. Uh, now, I see that this bulb doesn't work here. Um... Before it was flashing, so I'm gonna just see if maybe the bulb itself is out. But that works, that works. Let's check with the key. So I'm gonna... All right. The key is on and this headlight is off. Before this headlight was always on. And you can see the other headlights off as well. That's good. Switch the knob. Look at that. Both low beams working. 
test the high beam. See that both high beams are working. There's something wrong with that bulb. I think I have to put it in all the way, um, but it is working. And also this is a bi-xenon, so it has a high and a low beam, and you can see that's also working, uh, as well as the high beam itself. So that's awesome. All right, oh, here we go. Parking lamp front right is out. That was it. All right, now it's time for new brakes. So let's get these put on there. All right, the wheel is off. Now we can remove the caliper. All right, so now's a good time to check out all of your suspension components. I went uh, through with the pry bar. All the ball joints and bushings are nice and tight. This strut here was actually replaced in 2020. You can see the date on the sticker there. So everything looks good on this side. Everything checks out. And uh, now let's get the uh, caliper off. All right, so I did remove the caliper and the brake pads. Uh, they did have some meat on them. And then uh, remove the disc. All right, the brake rotor has been removed and I hit up the uh, mating surface here with just a wire wheel. And then I coated it with some anti-seize, so hopefully uh, that won't rust. Luckily, it wasn't rusted this time. Uh, it wasn't stuck on there. So hopefully it'll make it easier for the next guy, which is probably going to be me. Um, but yeah, now time to put on the new stuff. So the new rotors are in. These are actually the drilled rotors that are supposed to be in the car. The ones that I took off were uh, aftermarket. They, didn't, they weren't drilled. I mean, there's no performance gain here. It just uh, looks better. Uh, so I got these. These are for the front. I got the rears here. Um, I got the service kit for the suspension and the transmission. And here I have the brake pads. These are the new ones. I just uh, popped the brake sensor in there. And uh, time to put these on the car now. We're going to take our new Zimmerman brake rotor. Of course, I got it a little bit dirty already. And we're just going to make sure I line up that. A bit tricky doing it one-handed and uh, let me just throw that screw in all right much better i threw that in there now it's time to get the caliper back on caliper is on and bolted in now these wheels here have about mm, 50 miles on them since i last cleaned them and you can already tell that there's a layer of uh, brake dust on there uh, the pads that were on here before were uh, semi-metallic pads and the brake dust was uh, just crazy coming from them. Uh, it was really bad. These wheels would be uh, orange in a few days or brown. So I went ahead and got some Acubona brake pads. These are ceramic pads. The brake dust output on these is pretty low, um, or at least it doesn't stick to the wheel. So I'm going to go with these. Uh, I think these feel better as well. I have these on my E-Class, and I really like how that car brakes now uh, after I swap those out. So I'm going to put them on the SL. Now this car has a floating caliper design, so these slide in relatively easily. Uh, I'm gonna lube up the backing plate here just to prevent any uh, corrosion sticking to this. And uh, then we'll get this wheel put back together. All right, so this is the one with the sensor going in. Just wanna get it in there nice and properly. Sweet, and then this one as well, and then Here's the brake hardware here. Uh, I didn't get new brake hardware, so I'm just going to hit these with a wire wheel, um, put some lubricant on there, and we're going to reuse these. All right, about a minute with the wire brush, and they're looking brand new. And we can get these popped in here. There's one. Let's get our little spring retainer in here. And I'm going to need my other hand to get the other pin in. The other pin is in, and now just need to plug in the brake sensor. Sweet. Now the brakes are done. I'm going to hit up the other side, uh, put the wheels back on, and then we'll work on the hydraulic suspension. Wheel and tire are put back together. Unfortunately, this wheel has a bit of curb rash on it, but I'm going to be repainting these wheels um, before I get the new tires put on. And uh, I'm probably going to be painting that brake caliper as well. It just looks a bit old, and I'm thinking just painting it black. Normally, I wouldn't paint these kind of calipers uh, because they have the Mercedes emblem on them, or I should say the Mercedes-Benz uh, logo there. But as you can see, it's all faded and cracked, and it's not really there anymore. So I, I don't feel as bad uh, painting over this. Um, now, the next thing we're going to do under here before I put the wheel back on 
I just sprayed this all down with some cleaner, is uh, the hydraulic suspension accumulator there. Every time I hit a bump or a pothole, any type of uh, imperfection in the road, the uh, red ABC light comes on, and I believe it's because uh, one of the accumulators is bad. So I have a replacement accumulator for the front, rear, and the return accumulator. Now there is also an accumulator right here. Uh, you can see it up there. I can see on a sticker over here, this has been pulled off of a junkyard before. This has actually been replaced with a used unit. Uh, hopefully I don't have any issues with that. Um, it looks like it's been replaced recently. Uh, so I'm just going to worry about the, this one and the two in the back. So I'm going to get this one pulled off here. See that? Now, I already uh, bled the uh, system here. I uh, just cracked the bleeder screw. I do not have the suspension at full droop. Currently, the only wheel that's lifted off the ground is the, the wheel that, um, next to here. So I did crack that and a bit of fluid did come out, so there was a bit of uh, pressure in the system. So right now, I'm just unbolting the bolts that mount the accumulator to the uh, block up here. And then I'll lower it down and remove the hard line. All three of the mounting bolts are removed. So now the uh, accumulator is loose. All right, here's the accumulator. It's all dirty. And uh, we'll test this afterwards, but for now, let's get our new one. So this is our new accumulator. Uh, it's uh, an OEM Corteco brand, so it's going to be pretty good. Hopefully it lasts longer than the other one. That accumulator has been replaced and now we can put the fender liner back on and uh, get the wheel on all right the wheel is back on I uh, hit the suspension button raised it up and down and right now it's in the lower position so it's looking good everything is working uh, now we're gonna move on to the rear I have two accumulators to do back there and both sides uh, of the brakes the rear brakes are more of the same so we're gonna put on the rotor the caliper the wheel and now we can move on to the other side. All right, so now we're on the driver's side and I uh, took off the fender liner here and this was actually already loose. So I think somebody's been in here before. Uh, so I pulled this out and uh, here's our accumulator here. And now I cracked it loose so we can just do the same thing as before. Loosen this, take these two off. But there's also another accumulator right, right up in here. Yeah, I'm touching the base of it there. And that's a return accumulator. I'm going to be replacing that one too, so I'm going to have to get that out as well. Uh, so I'm going to do this one, then I'm probably going to have to pull this out a little bit more. All right, accumulator number two is out. And uh, this one looks very, very, very old. Just like the other one. Now I have to get to this one. This is the replacement part. Uh, this is the return accumulator. Um, I believe that's also original, which is why I got it. Uh, and it's buried pretty deep in there. So I think I'm gonna have to dive pretty deep into that. About an hour later, everything's in, it's done. New accumulators are in. Um, yeah, that really sucked. So time to get the fender liner on, uh, put the wheel on, and we'll be able to drive the car. The new tires are here, so it's time to bring the SL down to the tire shop and get these things thrown on. The SL just got his new tires, and oh my, this thing rides so good. These are nice, they're soft, they're grippy, and I wasn't spinning the rear tires this time. The grip has definitely improved here in the rear. Before, every time I hit the gas, I would spin the tires, so I had to drive it in comfort mode, which starts it out in second gear, but I don't have to do that anymore. Now it actually puts the power to the ground. And these rear tires, they are wide. They are 285. Massive. 
All right, now it's time to fix the uh, instrument cluster screens. As you can see, both of them have, uh, looks like a peeling layer on top. And so I could spend about a hundred, uh, I think it was $270 for a pair of replacement screens, or I can use uh, some polarized film that's in here and just replace the top layer of the screen. And I think I'm gonna do that. This only costs about $14 and the screens were 270, so hopefully this goes well. Luckily in this car, I can do it without taking the steering wheel off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off this uh, bezel here. So once the clips are removed, this pops right out and I have access to the bolts to remove the instrument cluster. Now there are three bolts here, here and here. It looks like somebody put some glue in here at some point. Um, but once those are out, you can just pull this out and unplug it from the back. Now we have our instrument cluster out and we can get to work disassembling. All right, now with these tabs removed, this lifts up and we're gonna set this aside so it doesn't get dirty on the inside. Now you get a really good look at the screen. See that? Not good. Now we can remove this uh, housing back here as we take off all those clips. Set this aside. All right, the overlays are removed. Now we can remove this and get to the screens. Now we have a really good look at the screens. You can see here why I couldn't see the screens during the day. So let's get these removed and peel that old layer off and put the new stuff on. All right, the uh, outer film has now been removed. Uh, one of them chipped off into a million pieces and the other one I was actually able to get all up in one sheet. Very nice. Uh, so I have to reinstall these into the gauge cluster here, plug it in and then I'll be able to orient my film correctly. It's polarized, so it has to be in the correct orientation unless it will uh, not show up correctly. All right, I was able to get the orientation down and I cut out this piece, so I'm gonna stick that on there, put it back in, make sure it's good, then I'm gonna do the other screen. All right, screen is installed, and as you can see, works perfect. So now I'm gonna get the one done on the other side and we'll wrap this up. The screens are back in and everything's looking good, so now I'm gonna finish reassembling the instrument cluster here and then I'm gonna pop it back in the car. All right, everything is reinstalled and we went from this to this. I think it looks a whole lot better. You can actually see the screen now. That's gonna be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit that like button. If you really wanna help support the channel, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one.